Hey, what's up, everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a classic light speed effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. So it's going to look a little something like this right here. So as you can see, you have these stars that come out, and at the very end, it just sort of warps towards them. And this is usually what the classic um, effect looks like. You just have the stretch and then the warp, and then right at the end here, it would cut to something else like the spaceship, you know, sort of warping off into the distance. So it would be another angle right here. So that's what we're going to be creating today is this warp speed effect. So let's get started. What we need for this effect is actually just some pictures of stars, something really large. So what I did was I just went to Google, searched to find a picture. Um, I went and changed the search settings so that it will, or the tools, and made sure that the size was set to larger than two megapixels. And then I just searched, and I believe I used this one or another one that is similar to that one. I downloaded it and used it. Again, if this is for something professional, you might wanna to have to look out for copyrights on that. Anyway, once you download this to your program, what you're going to need to do is import it, so it's right here, and then create yourself a new sequence. So I'm gonna go in File, New, Sequence, and I'm gonna make it 1080p. The reason we got a really large star picture is so that we have a lot of wiggle room. We can zoom it in without reducing our quality. So what we're going to do in this new sequence right here is we're going to drag in our piece of uh, footage, or in this case, our picture of stars. And you'll see that what we have is it is a square picture. That's okay. If we click on it and go to effect controls, we'll notice that the scale is only 46. So we have a lot of room to work with. We'll just stretch this out up so that it covers the entire uh, sequence right here. So now what we're going to do is we want to find basically how long we want this to go. So usually somewhere around one, two, three seconds. So probably right around three to five is pretty good. Let's see this one. It it ended up being um, roughly three three ish seconds, three seconds and a half. So we're going to do exactly the same right around there, like maybe three twelve. Now what we want to do is we want to click on this. We want to go into scale, and then we want to move over to the very end of this footage. Move right to the end, and then we want to scale this all the way up to something maybe like 122. So now all we have is this linear scale happening right here. Nothing too exciting going on, but that is perfectly fine, because what we've done is we've created the building blocks for the actual effect. So now what we want to do is we want to right-click on this, and we want to click on Nest. So we want to go to the footage, right-click, and click Nest. Click OK. And now what we have is Premiere Pro has this sequence that it just thinks is a piece of footage zooming in. It doesn't have any of the other scale properties with it. And because of that, what we can do is we can go into our effects over here on the bottom left and then go search for Echo. So we're going to go here, search for Echo, go to Video Effects Time Echo, drag it onto our footage right like so. Now, if you'll notice, whenever we increase an amount of echoes, every time we increase an echo, it's going to add another piece of footage behind it. So you'll see that uh, you can really see it at the edges right here, like this down here in the bottom left. Let me bring this up right here, down here in the bottom left. Watch this little streak right there. Every time we add one, all it's doing is just adding another frame starting off, and then it's just sort of combining them all together. And so what we get when we do this is we get these light streaks that start to come through it. And we also get this really neat effect where the light starts to bloom as well, which is really what the warp speed effect uses as well. So now, once we have this, we want to actually increase the number of echoes. The more echoes we create, the longer the streaks will get. I found that somewhere right around 50 looks pretty natural, so I'm going to drag this up to 50. And you'll notice how now when we go really far, it keeps going and it actually stretches these out really, really nicely. All the way up until about... You'll notice that when it stops stretching it is the entire thing will start moving because no, it's no longer echoing. So now the entire footage is just zooming in like it was before. And so what we want to actually do is we want to find that point. So right there. So they're still extending, still extending, still extending. And then it starts moving inwards. So if we wanted to make them even longer this, of course, we can just increase the number of echoes here. If they don't look you know, really good at this moment, you can change the echo time somewhere around negative uh, 0.03 will give you the effect that uh, looks good. You want negative in this situation because you want it to start as a normal piece of footage and then you slowly keep adding an echo in every single frame. If you do it positive, it'll start 
like this and then it would just move like this. We don't actually want the end effect. What we want is it sort of going into the effect. That's what creates the warp speed. So now that we have this right here, we've gotten to the point where we can see that there's no more echoes being added. It's just the entirety of the image zooming in. We're going to go into here. We're going to go to effects and we're going to search for an effect called transform. It's going to be under video effects to start transform. We're going to drag that onto our footage right here. Now we're going to go down into transform. We're going to click on the scale button right here and we're going to move forward. Let's see, we're at our, maybe about a, a second. Somewhere right around there and we're going to scale it in a lot. And you'll notice this starts to get a little uh, pixelated in here, but that's okay um, because it's only going to be a very quick second and then it's going to cut to something else. So now we have it zoomed in. What we're going to do is we want to uncheck this and then turn on the shutter angle and bring this up to something maybe like uh, maybe like 120-ish. And what that's going to do is it's just going to give us a little bit of motion blur here. So if you go back, you notice around the edges that it'll start to blur even more than it is actually blurring right here. So we're just going to like sort of put blur on top of blur here. And what all this does is it allows us to um, add a little bit of the, the kick in there, that, that sort of really fast jump to the uh, light speed. So now that we have all of this in place, let's go ahead and render it and see what it looks like. You'll see that this is a red line right here. This is really CPU intensive because we're adding blur on top of blur. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but we can just click enter and wait it out. And so now that it is done right here, so let's take a look. And we have our effect. Maybe we want to make this back part go a little bit faster. We can do that um, by just dragging this into maybe like right here and then re-rendering it out. And it'll go a whole lot faster right here at the end. But that is just sort of uh, nitpicking and making the effect work exactly how you want it to, uh, fine-tuning it to what you want. But that is the basics of how to create this effect. All you really need to do Find a picture of stars, zoom it in, pre-comp it so that we can add in our echo, and then we can use a little transform at the end to sort of give it that kick, and we have ourselves an old-school classic light speed animation. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go and them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make a video every other day on Adobe-related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.